Okay. Hello once again. You notice here I got a page full of stuff. So I'm going to go through and erase without, all right, you'll sooner or later you'll see this base fee box. If you remember the relationship of this, it is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to 1. In this case, I think that was 10 or 20 long. So I'm going to grab everything and get started again on redoing that problem 4-3. This time I'm going to be concentrating on different ways to change the length. So I'm hitting there. I'm grabbing everything. with a, You see if I go across right to left, everything I touch is selected. If I go left to right, everything that's completely inside. So I'm going to go ahead once again. This time I'm going to go ahead and do it a slight different way using the dynamic and I'll do my best here and to do my shift so I'm gonna go ahead and draft a line here with the polar on and make it the right length and my right length is 2.85 okay now you see because I didn't know what I was doing it jumps anywhere I wanted didn't quite do it because I don't understand the dynamic now I'm gonna do the dynamic and I'm going to try to put that line by going here. If you notice, it's telling me I can kind of, it's highlighting and letting me tab some things in. So I'm going to make that 2.85, tab it over to that, and I'm going to make it the 143. And that, put that in directly the way I wanted. Personal belief, you're better off clicking over here, turning off the dynamics so your brain doesn't get wigged out, clicking and saying at 2.85 angle 143, and those should be the same. So turning the dynamic on and off if you're a dynamic user or if you're not a dynamic user um, is the single most important skill. So until you can get used to turning it off on a regular basis or turning it on a regular basis, you really are not there yet wherever there is. I'm going to erase this. Remember, I can click on that, go up here and change it right away to the correct layer. And now we're going to talk about how to change the length of something. First, of course, we're going to stick with what I know or I believe is just you're going to the principal's office, left click, left click over the spinny point, space barring, space barring, C for copy and rotating 85. We have looked at different ways. Personal belief on a lot of this stuff, if you're going to change that length to 3.09, you go ahead, draw a circle, center radius, shift right click, end point there, and then you give it 3.09. You extend, spacebar, screw that, grab the wrong one. Up, shift brings it back, shift brings it back, and you're where you need to be. I'm going to hit some U for undos, 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 and I'm going to show you now how to change the length using the dynamic. First, I'll show you the way the dynamic looks, the way it's often set up out of the box, and then I will show you the way the dynamic looks when it is not set out of the box. There are three ways, probably more than that, to change the length of something. One is to kind of draw a circle and extend or trim it. The second one is to use the lengthen command, L-E-N. That's a great way. The third way is to use these kind of dynamic grip snaps. So by turning on the dynamic now, as I go ahead, I'm zooming in and grab that with the left click. And right there, I've got my dynamic set up so it only gives me the distance. And that's how I am going to have it set for the settings for people in my class. I do not want you to be able to do stretches and some other things out of the box. I want it to have one thing. So in this case, I changed that 3.09 and it's changed. I'll do that undo for undo, you for undo. Once again, if the dynamic is on, I left click on the thing. I think if I just left click on the top, right, you see you get that nice, you get that nice bit there, which is kind of nice. But if I left click in the middle and then left click on the edge I want to change, you see it gets me that one input and I can change it, tab through. Shift right click, object snap settings. In the dynamic, the place that I have set so it's only one dimension is there. Again, I'll show you again. Shift, right click, object snap settings. The place that is controlling the dynamic input is right there. And I typically only show one resulting dimension. 
is I'm only using that for changing length because of the way I prefer to draft, trying to set you up for scripting is what a lot of I'm doing is I'm setting you up for later on, being able to use spreadsheets to draw, being able to basically draw a little bit if you're visually impaired or you're on the phone, whatever the case would be. So I am gonna just now turn all of these on and show you how it looks like to change the length. If they are all on, hit OK. Now when I left click on something, get that same interface, and then left click again, you see it gives me a whole lot of inputs here. All right, so I can change anything at once. So I just tab around through it, so it's got four different inputs. That's why I don't like it. So if I wanted to change the angle to 30 degrees from the standard position angle, it does that. But that just was actually not a 30 degree, it was a rotation. So I can do U for undo. I can left click, left click. And if you notice, there's different ones. Tab, 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 tab. I think that might give me the one that puts it back. So you had basically a change rotation angle if you want to rotate a little bit. So that, again, is a th another way to actually do a rotation. I'm going to do U for undo. Once again, I don't prefer you have the dynamics on for doing this. You left click, that's too many inputs. So if you're going to use the dynamic, I really suggest shift right click, object snap settings, change the dynamic input to only have the resulting dimension on. And I guess you can change these back and forth. That's the key to settings. Resulting dimension, OK. So now when you hit OK, now when you grab on something and grab its length, left click, you just have one bit. You notice the good side of having that dynamic on sometimes is you get all your options stacked out in front of you. I'm using the up and down arrow key, but they're also down below on the bottom. You see base point, copy, undo, exit, training your eye to look in one spot. Um, and so in other words, training your eye not to follow the flea where you're just looking at the geometry. By putting that up there, it's taking away in my estimation of you looking at the intuitive or the intrinsic geometry. Again, these are there are all kinds of different ways to do things. I suggest that you learn to do one or two. And I really suggest to talk to someone else um, in other classes and just draft these drawings once or twice with them, setting up a little bit of an exchange. I recommend even more that you go to someone who's not in your program that's in another class. And just compare and draft how you do the different programs. You will pick things up from all different instructors and all books, all, all websites. Um, and over time, you'll see me kind of making a case for the transferability of some of the way I do things. There's no single way to do this. Um, and as a rule, that's why I'm going to try to make my videos, some of these this semester, showing you the other options, but obviously <coughs> advocating for my way, which is not the best way, but it's my way. All right, so it's not my way or the highway. All right, so let me go back here. How does the dynamic, dynamic work? Well, you've got to shift, right click, object snap settings, and change the dynamic input settings here. There are some other ones around that tell you whether it's Cartesian or polar, absolute, etc. All right, so that is changing the length. So I'm going to now go through this drawing as quick as I can. You've seen it before with the way, um, with the lengthen command now, which is really a good one. The only thing about the lengthen command, it is lengthen or shorten. It's kind of weird. You won't see it up here because I don't think it's in the toolbar for 2009. I'll just use the command. So I'm going to go ahead, click, right click, erase, and here we go. Left click, left click. I got the dynamic on. It's wigging me out. Wigging me out. Left click, left click, space bar, space bar, C for copy, 85, escape, escape. LEN for length and total for length 3.09. Grab the end, push it forward. Left click. Left click by the ear, space bar, space bar, C for copy. 58 positive because I've taken out my right hand. LEN for lengthened, T for total. Did the first one. The next one is 1.93. You grab the end you want to shorten up, escape, left click. You're going to the principal's office, left click, space bar, 
space bar. C for copy. Minus 88. Escape, escape. Left click. Nope. Lengthen or left click. Total. Grab the total length as 1.93. Select and push it out. Up. Do it again. Wrong length. I'll do it the other way. I'm going to select, type L E N, T for total, 8.21. Push it out. Left click. Left click. Spacebar, spacebar, C for copy. Positive 95. All right, I think you've got the length and down. I'm going to take you finally back to the circle because it is not a bad way because you can see what you're doing and it transfers to your hands and a couple other things. Center radius, shift right click, end point there. Change my radius to the length, which is uh, 5.5. .53. And then trim, screw that. Kazia Fundi Nikujenga Nakubomoa. Left click, left click, space bar, space bar, C for copy, 52. Positive. I can turn on my dynamic. I can left click. I can left click. I see it jumps to just the one. The one there is 6.35. And then, even though the book may tell you, don't do it that way, left click, shift right click from the end point, shift right click to the end point, which takes us now to fill out the last skill. You'll see whether you see that, how it went to the wrong layer. I can use the magic tool brush, select the ink and cast it. Now, the final push and of these two videos is to introduce you now to the polyline edit, P edit, it's a little bit different. Um, then some of the other modified commands you'll do it as often like this P E for polyline edit. I'm going to turn off this dynamic, though you can try it with it on as well. P E polyline edit. Select a polyline. Do not use the multiple. Do not use the multiple. You're going to select. Do you want to turn it into one? Yes. J for join. Grab all of your objects, though sooner beginning you want to grab around the pike one 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 grab all your objects and now you notice when you put the dynamic on and select something so I've now got the dynamic on I go to here it gives me that really nice input so that's a great thing not that you're gonna to want to change that way but it's a great way to kind of you get a different visual on that so you see that visual things are together you do not want to life lay things together like that but Add a loaf, minus an RP, give me a break, make me a region. So the region command is just region, R-E-G-I-O-N, I'm typing it, R-E-G-I-O-N. I'm going to grab the polyline, which is there. I've just made it a region, it's made it on the current layer. I can now do extrude, which makes sense. Extrude, select your objects. And I'm going to extrude it a distance of 4 V point 1 comma 1 comma 1 shade and that's how close you are to 3d so all that other stuff that we do is all about getting 2d those last three commands were this P edit region extrude start playing around when you get a closed shape to making that closed shape from something called a flat 2d region to a 3D extruded salad. Just don't tell them I told you how to do it. Thanks for listening.